Hi, I'm Joe Gratz. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this reusable fabric mask. They can be used by anybody, caregivers, people going to the grocery store, people walking their dog. They're super easy to make and they don't use elastic. They just use fabric and they're 100% machine washable. For each mask, you need two 9 by 6 inch rectangles of fabric in different colors for the front and back and two strips of fabric one and three quarter inches by at least 40 inches long. Um, we have cut these selvage to selvage on the fabric, just the width of the fabric, and we've left the selvage edge on so that we don't have to hem it later. Uh, this will cut out a step that would take multiple hours if you left it on, so it's great for efficiency's sake. Um, to make these into the straps for the mask, you're going to need to turn them into double fold bias tape. You can do that manually with an iron, or you can use this tool to speed up the process. You still have to iron it, each one individually, but this will work great. This is a 25 millimeter bias tape maker, and that works perfectly for the one and three quarter inch uh, strips. If you have a different size bias tape maker, you will have to adjust the pattern accordingly. If you don't want to go to the trouble of ironing all of the bias tape by hand, which is very tedious and it does take hours, you can buy pre-made bias tape. Um, this is what it looks like in packaging that you would find at a Joann's or a Michael's or online at like a Walmart or a Target. Um, make sure that you get extra wide and double fold. Double fold is extra important and extra wide makes it so much easier to sew. All right. So what the double fold means versus the single fold that you can also find is that it is folded once like this and then again like this. That gives it a double fold, there's no raw edge showing, and it has a clean finish and it is half inch wide. The half inch size on the packaging refers to the, side, to the size of the folded ribbon, not the unfolded ribbon. So to make the bias tape, I like to start with my fabric face down so that the pattern will be showing on the outside. And I take my bias tape maker and I'm gonna thread the fabric into this section. Here. You can see that it kind of goes all the way through. And I like to start with the right corner of the fabric and get that into the maker, and then I go in with the left corner, and it'll kind of already be fairly centered. Then I'm going to push the fabric through until it reaches the other side or until it stops. If it doesn't reach the other side like that on its own, I'll take a metal turning tool. You can use a toothpick, you can use anything that will fit in this little groove here, and you can push the fabric out. Then once it's out a little bit, I pull it out about this much, so I can take my iron, and I start horizontally, and I iron this, and then I hold the bias tape maker with my thumb here and my hand underneath the fabric to help prevent any wrinkles from clogging up the gizmo as I'm going, so I can do it in as fell of a swoop as possible. I hold the bias tape maker about one inch away from my iron, and I'm using just the back right side of my iron. I'm not using the front side. This will prevent wrinkles while you're working and then it'll, be, it'll, it'll give you a much smoother product. And then I'm going to work all the way till the end. I'm going to get here, I'm going to hold for just a second, and I'm done. Now I'm going to go back to the front and it should be cool enough to touch by now and I'm just going to fold it in half. But if you have any spots that are uneven, kind of like they are here, where this side is maybe thinner than this side, it doesn't matter. Because the next step is going to be folding it in half, and it's going to look even. See? So it, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's still going to be completely functional, and it's going to look fine. So for this step, I do this a bit differently than I did this step. I'm going to start horizontally, but I'm going to move it vertically so that I can kind of be pushing the ribbon up to match the other side. The main important thing here is really, really, really try to match those edges as close as you can so that you can have the, the most working space without having to worry about anything. You can just sew and sew and not have to worry about if you're running off the edge or not. So then, once I get close to the end, I'm again going to be careful not to burn my fingers. And I'm going to hold on the end just a little bit longer to make sure that it's a really crisp crease. And that's it. Now you've got double-sided bias tape, double-fold bias tape. Now we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to sew them right sides together. And we're just going to sew 
these lines, these short sides, at approximately quarter of an inch seam allowance. Do not sew these sides yet. So to sew this, I'm not gonna pin it because there's nothing that's gonna be torquing it. I don't need to pin it, it just takes time. And I'm gonna sew this side at approximately quarter inch seam allowance. That for me is the edge of my presser foot, but you need to know what works for your machine. Don't bank on it being that. So I'm just gonna start sewing. When I get to the end, like about here, I'm going to cut it off. If you don't have a machine that has a handy dandy little cutter, you're just going to back stitch a little bit by pressing whatever button or pulling whatever lever makes your machine go backwards, go back, and then go forward again, and then you can pull your work out and cut it up here. Now I'm going to move on to the other side, which is the same concept. You're going to line up about quarter inch seam allowance, you're going to start your work, just so maybe go one more stitch it doesn't actually cut it you need to find your clippers and clip. now that we've sewn both the short sides we're going to turn it right side out and press it to get it ready for pleating and to put the straps on the top and bottom so to do that, I'm going to open it up, see how it's a tunnel now, and I'm going to get these seam lines here arranged in the middle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push it to one side or the other, making sure that it's right along the seam line. We don't want it to be out here, you want it to be right along the seam line. I'm going to fold it, and you're going to put your iron over it for like three seconds, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, just until it's pressed flat. And then you're going to flip it over, and you're going to do the same thing to this seam line. It doesn't matter which side you press it to. You don't have to press it to the same side. You don't have to press it to opposite sides. It just needs to be pressed flat along the seam. And then you're going to turn it right side out. And then you're going to take these seams that you just pressed on the other side and line them up nicely on both sides and then press them flat from this side. And there you go. So to do the pleats on your mask, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need pins. I like this kind of length of pin. It makes it much easier. You can use short ones, but they're more irritating. And you need some kind of measuring tool. I have this really beat up hem gauge. I've worn the numbers off. You can use a ruler, any kind of measuring implement. Now, what you're gonna need for the mask is you're gonna want three even pleats on each side. If your fabric has a pattern with a direction, like it has dogs on it and they're all like standing like this, you want to make sure that looking at the mask straight on with the dogs standing as they should, that your pleats are going to go down, not up. So your pleats need to be even and I found a pretty foolproof way of doing that. I hold my fabric up like this with whatever side, and I'm going to measure one inch from the bottom. Even though I know that this part is shorter, I'm gonna measure one inch from the longer piece. And then I'm going to go fold my fabric down half an inch, like that. And I'm gonna remove my implement now that I've pinched it in place. I'm gonna line up the edges of the fabric to each other so it's a nice straight line. And then I'm going to pin through the edge, and then through. It doesn't matter if it's not perfectly straight, the pin, it, it, as long as it holds it in place, it has done its job. Now you're going to line up to this edge here, another inch, and then you're going to fold down another half inch. You're going to hold it in place, you're going to pin it, same way as the first one, and you're going to repeat for a third and final pleat. You're going to have a little bit of excess, that's fine, because you have a little bit of excess down here too. And that's one side. Then you're going to repeat the process for the other side. Don't rotate the mask. That's going to give you the wrong kind of pleat. You want the pleats to be going the same direction. If you did this, See how it twists weird? 
you want to make sure that you hold the pleats the right way up here, they're all going down, and that you hold it the same way here. Measure to one inch, measure to half an inch, put the implement down, pin. This is great to do while you're watching TV because you'll be doing it for hours. Try to make sure you don't get a thing like this where it kind of folds over on itself. If it's done that, you can take the pin out from the back, flatten out that section, and try again. Maybe it stays a little longer than you want it to. That's fine, too. I like to go past it a little bit. There you go. Then I'm going to do it again. And a third and final time for this side. And there you go. The pleats for one face mat. To sew the pleats into place, we're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance. For me, that's the edge of my presser foot. I'm going to start here. And then as I'm nearing this pleat, I'm going to make sure that the corner of the pleat next to it is not folded over. You'll know because it'll be really hard to sew through, but it works a lot better if it's not folded over. You're going to keep going now that I've checked that it's not. Before I reach the pin, I don't want to sew over the pin, I'm going to take it out. The pleat, the needle is already through the back side of the pleat, and it should be held in place very well. I'm going to keep working. Make sure that I'm in to this next pleat before I take the pin out, but don't sew over the pin. Keep working. Make sure you're in the pleat. Take it out. Work here. And done. Now, to do the other side, which will be going in the opposite direction, you follow the same procedure. It's the exact same thing. Gonna line up the edge, quarter inch away. Get started. This one's gonna be a bit harder to sew through because it's gonna to wanna to curl up. If it's wanting to curl up, lift up your presser foot and make sure that it's flat. And when you set your presser foot back down, it'll be hold, it'll be holding it in place where you want it. So forward, don't run over your pin. You don't want more bent pins than you already have work forward. You see that I'm not quite quarter inch, that's because I'm trying to go more in a straight line because my pleats went a little diagonal. Once you get to the end, you're done. And there you go. Now your pleats are sewn into place. Now to put the straps in place, we're going to find the center point of the mask really easily. We're going to fold it in half, and then we're going to pin where that halfway point is. So make sure there's not a little bend in your fabric like that, because that's not your center point, is it? So you're going to take this, and you're just going to go right through your center point. You're going to do this, and you're going to go right through your center point. You're going to flip it so that the pleats are going down, because that's the right side. And then you're going to do the same thing for your bias tape. You don't even have to pin this one, because what you're going to do, I just put my thumb there, and you're just going to layer it over the center point of your mask. At this point, you're going to take the pin out, holding your center point here. You're going to go like this. You're going to make sure that the mask is all the way into the bias tape, as far as it will go, and then you're going to pin it in place for real this time through like that. And you're going to repeat the same step on the bottom. I find it easiest if I'm working from the top of the mask, so that's what I'm going to do. Find the center point.
line it up with the center point of the mask. Make sure that the mask is all the way inside the tape or the bias tape. And you're going to go like that. It's okay that it's not in over here. You're going to do that as you sew. This is just to hold it in place in the correct position. So to sew these behind the head and neck straps, we are not going to start where our pin is. This is just to hold the whole thing on center. What we're instead going to do is start at the end. And we're going to sew along here, along this little line. We're going to sew the two sides together. We're going to sew all the way down until we get to the corner of the mask. Then we're going to really make sure that the mask is inside the fold of the bias tape. We're going to keep sewing at the same seam allowance, like close to this edge. It'll vary depending on your machine. I can't give you an exact measurement. Close to the edge, all the way through here, and then all the way to the other side. And then you're going to repeat those same steps for the bottom of the mask. So now we're ready to sew these straps. So I have the opening side facing to the left because that's where I'm going to be sewing down. I want to make sure that I sew the two sides together. And I'm going to sew as close as I can to the seam edge without running off of it, which is not ideal. So I'm not going to give you a seam allowance to work with. You just have to sew as close as you're comfortable and as you can. Okay. And now as I'm kind of approaching where the mask is going to be, I'm actually going to go a little bit farther. Now I'm going to get here, and I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to make sure that the mask is sandwiched nicely in between the fold, and then I'm going to sew down. I'm going to slow down through here because this is kind of a, a crucial and important step. I'm going to go ahead and kind of get preemptively the other side of the mask lined up. I'm going to start sewing. As I get to the center pin, I'm going to take it out. Do the last kind of check at the edge to make sure. And so when I'm sewing that, it is a slight curve. It's not a straight line over the top of the mask. That's, that's a good thing. That, it, it's more more like the shape of a face. And as I reach the end, I'm just going to do whatever I need to do a knot and trim the thread and there you go then you're just going to repeat on the other side always making sure that the opening of the of the bias tape is facing to your left so here's a finished mask the pleats allow the mask to expand like this while staying cinched in at the sides the straps go over the head and the neck and they're adjustable to any head size and they aren't quite as uncomfortable as the elastic is reported to be and it is all completely machine washable and nothing is going to fall apart like some elastic tends to do.